Onigashimasu. Welcome back to the Goji Karate Center. Uh, so, what happens when you hit 110 videos? Well, start running out of ideas that are like great and fantastic and you start speaking to your mates and they say, hey, why don't you let people see how you train? Um, see people or see, let people see what works in your dojo and what doesn't work and, and go from there. So tonight is something that I'm playing with and toying with at the moment within my dojo and it is trying to bring various streams of ideas together to help my students improve um, across many ages. So from my little dinkies, uh, probably around about age six, all the way through to my adults, my black belts, etc. As always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Please go back and look at the comments that were written a couple of weeks ago or over the last couple of weeks. Been some fantastic comments on our videos of late. We've just clocked to 8,000 subscriber mark. Thank you to everybody out there. We really do appreciate it. We're working on the importance of our foundation and we're covering the face, chest, stomach block and we're using that as a stepping stone and obviously that can graduate itself to Sandangi. Have a look over here or down at the bottom and you will get a link to a Sandangi breakdown video that'll help you know what we're talking about if we, you're watching for the first time. Um, but what we're really trying to do is we're trying to find the balance between the hard training, the intellectual training, um, and the physical conditioning that works within our karate. So, uh, to start off with, what we're going to work on are different ways of getting the technique right. So, Brian, please come. Okay, so we're going to start with Ageoke, and Brian is going to grab onto my hand. I'm going to bring my hand up and across my body. I'm going to touch my elbow, break free. From this position, Brian can simply just grab onto my arm. So we're bringing this arm down, touching the elbow, breaking free. So I'll go again. One, bringing it down, touch, break free. Let's go to chest level. So I'll bring it across the body, touch, and break free, and try and control a little bit. Grabs on, cross, touch, and break free. Grab on, cross, touch, break free. One more time, cross, touch, break free. If we go to Gedan, cross, round, break free. Grabs on, cross, round, break free. Okay. So this activity can be done by a non-karate person with a karate student, especially somebody who's of a low grade, a beginner grade, and it's going to teach one very important lesson, and that is not how to break free. It's not going to be a self-defense answer. It's going to be to bring the arm that is doing the block to the outside, rather than the very, very common mistake of bringing it up on the inside, or blocking on the inside, instead of on the outside. So in doing this, we can try and establish a way for a student to learn how to block the technique. Obviously, we, can, we, we would have gone through the uh, mirror training or the copy sensei training and maybe even some kind of rhyming or some kind of little mnemonic to help them learn. So we often will tell them secret block, Touch your elbow, face block, elbow strike. Secret block, touch your elbow, face block, elbow strike. Secret block, touch your elbow, chest block, elbow strike. Secret block, secret block, stomach block, elbow strike. Secret block, secret block, stomach block, elbow strike. In teaching them that there are secret blocks, what we're actually starting to encourage our students to learn is that in Goju there is typically two blocks in every generic single count. And we tend to overemphasize this because if we don't, 
students start to block like this and they neglect the very, very critical central part of the block. We get students doing this instead of students doing a proper block. Okay, so gorge blocks by their nature are very circular and there's usually a double or triple action. This has a pause in it and then a stop, but in reality, it just becomes one continuous movement. So once we've done that, what we'd like to do is we'd now like to start working on various parts of the blocking mechanism. So one of the biggest problems is people who turn the arm early. So they turn the arm and then they raise it. And we see a lot of people doing this raising of the arm using the deltoid to lift. And this is not highly advisable because we really want to get that arm up and forward. Okay, so this might differ from school to school, um, and it's my take on it in terms of anatomy and physiology. I'm five foot, I think it's 5'10", 173. Um, when I was younger, I weighed about 65 kilograms. I think that's about 130 pounds. And I've never been a big, strong, strapping guy. Today I'm a tubby, and I'll probably weigh in at around about 160 pounds, but I'm still 5'10" and I'm probably shrinking because I'm getting a little bit older, okay? So it's important to understand how to have power in the blocking, and at some point you've got to realize that you can't just be training all the time, you've got to have a life. Um, you've got to have some kind of balance. So Brian, please come. So what we can now do is our partner can hold an arm out, and this hand is now immediately placed on the chin, and I am raising my arm. Brian, you've got to bring it down, hold it there. A little bit of resistance. So we often encourage people to have gradual resistance. And now it's this idea of up and take it away. When you touch, it's at this point that you're going to start to drive it away with the rotation. So up and you're driving it away with the rotation. So this is some kind of resistance training, but it's also on the skin, because he's resisting, the skin is being pulled. So when you do this for quite a while, what's gonna happen? You're gonna end up with red skin, and eventually it might even become a little bit stronger. Okay, so if we're doing chudan level, we could have the same kind of concept of bringing the hand in and around. Come on, you've got to be stronger, Brian. One, two, three. So even if he holds one hand or even two hands, and I just alternate, one, two, three, four. The secret being lifting with the body weight behind, up. When you start lifting up, he starts pushing down to fight against it, which means he loses his ability to deal with the lateral, and so the lateral takes over. All right? You can only fight in one plane at a time and not in multiple, and that's why circular blocking tends to be so effective. And what we want to do is we want to be concentrating on this, and we want to start engaging the hips. So we can run through that, and the same principle, Brian, let's do a Geranzuki Make sure tight, strong shoulder, and all I want to do is get this here, my hip into my hand. So I'm using my, I'm effectively using my body weight to push his arm, push his arm, push his arm. And that's critical. So we've got to go through this step, and that teaches that tactile level. Then what we're looking at is a lot of repetition. So Brian is punching Jordan. One, two. One, two. One, two. Side and up. Press the arm to the side. It's missing me now effectively. I don't have to press it a million miles away. And up. Side, up. Side, up. And gradually the blocking mechanism 
should become easier. I mean, do about, at this point anyway, between 100 and 200 face blocks per person, uh, per person, and then the other person. And then the same with Chudan, or chest level, and then the same with Gedan. And so we're running through and we're doing punch one, one, two. I don't have a problem when people block to the inside. Um, I know that some instructors uh, would love to have opposite, uh, right on right, left on left, but I do think that you need to know both because it becomes a lot harder to block when it's on the inside. You have to be a little bit snappy, a little bit faster. On the gedan, it tends to happen, a lot of people tend to chop. We want to try and encourage circular movement. So, one. So, side, 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 side. Okay, so this is the next step. Thereafter, we try and encourage people to try and figure out what's going on with those secret blocks. So an exercise we used to do quite frequently when I was a young child in the dojo, and sensei would encourage us to do uh, double punching, and we would be working on the blocks. Now, in this particular example, it doesn't matter whether you end up on the inside or the outside. That's not important. What is important is that you use the secret block and the main block every single time. So you're effectively blocking two punches all the time. And you just want to again build that conditioning of block, 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 block. And again, since they would say to us, ah, uh, 50, 100, 200 count per, per side and then the other side. So Brian, please come. So Brian does Jordan, one, two. Jordan, one, two. Slow down. Okay, quite an easy activity and it allows you to build your tempo and you know as an instructor in the dojo you can work on that. Chudan is identical exercise to Jordan. So when we do this, we're just gonna be working on it without any footwork. At this point, we're standing and we're blocking a lot, okay? So just be careful of the mic, okay? Chudan, Chudan, one, two. Chudan is quite easy. Geran can be easy and then can be escalated. So Geran can be two punches to the groin. So from time you have to make space, bring it in, in, cross, round. Little bit of space, bring it in. Down. So. Okay, I think everybody gets the idea. However, you can always work on a slightly more complicated punching mechanism. So for these, generally speaking, you may get away with a family member who has a basic idea of how to punch, but the next exercise has to be worked out a little bit more carefully. So Brian, come. Uh, Gedan. Jordan. Gedan. Okay, so Gedan. Jordan. Gedan. Gedan. Jordan. Gedan. Gedan. Jordan. Gedan. Gedan. Jordan. Gedan. Right, so what we've just done is what I encourage people to do. And that is, one person takes control and calls the punches. And you can practice. Gedan, Jordan, Gedan. Gedan, Jordan, Gedan. That way you're conditioning. Now, the reason for all these exercises, a lot of people want to condition themselves. But when we do typical conditioning exercises, what we tend to notice is that people allow their egos to come out. And as a confession, I tend to do it myself. I like to win at the conditioning games. Um, and it can work to your detriment. Um, it can leave you in a situation where you are out, uh, out-trained by somebody, or you end up badly bruised, badly hurt, or you end up hurting somebody. Like Randori, the conditioning training, <coughs> sorry, 
needs to be done within the spirit of cooperation. However, these exercises are generally done both in the spirit of cooperation and by the sheer volume of exercises that you do, the sheer number of punches, etc., you're actually systematically doing a fair amount of conditioning on the arms. So this brings me to the next tier of my training. So at the beginning, we started with just trying to get the block right. Then we started to add a little bit of resistance. Then we started to work on the conditioning on the arm, breaking the block up into two parts. Um, and now, a well, single part, then a double part. And now what we want to do is we actually want to work on the physical conditioning of the arm. So one of the ideas that is kind of popular, and unfortunately, Jordan doesn't get covered in this, but Chudan does. So, um, sometimes Koikutai, Kokutai, or Ude uh, Tandan training. So, conditioning. All right, this is where Goji people, Yuichiri people, and people in Okinawan karate systems tend to find their uh, physicality coming out quite a lot. Um, because often we're chilled and relaxed with most of the other stuff, um, but we tend to get a little bit brutal with one another. So we start with just like the outside block. So just blocking. Now, two chains of thought on this. One, do I bang with the bone? And I get a bone on bone contact. Or do I twist my arm and try to get onto the backside of the bone? So. I'm kind of digging in, but not really working on bashing bone against bone. I'd like to see your comments, please. Obviously, I'm reserving my thoughts for now. So, this, or, and dig, pull. Okay, same external. Bone on bone. Or, a little bit, turn your hand. Turn. Turning the hand. And let's slow down. So, contact and turn. Contact and turn. What are your thoughts? Chudan, okay, chest block. So, bone on bone. Or, pull. Okay, so, this is great, simple, easy. And you could go through one, two, and three. But you can also do Combinations. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, one, two, one, two. All right, all combinations. One, two, uh, bring here, and then up three. All right, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Teach coordination to children. We change it from bone conditioning to hand, 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 hand. Controlling the elbow. Okay, right, so at some point maybe Good for children to learn coordination, but not good for them to do bone-on-bone -bone conditioning. It could be dangerous for them. Obviously, it's a little bit more of an adult topic, conditioning arms and bones, and needs to be done at the appropriate time. One of the things to consider with children is that they often can create such a powerful muscular contraction that they can tear the attaching point off of the bone. It's sometimes called an avulsion fracture. Muscle contracts, and at the point where it is attached, it breaks off. The same thing can happen if the muscle is tight and then it gets compressed. That muscle is then forced to pull even harder on that ligament and it can also do that kind of breaking mechanism. So we often see youngsters getting these funny, like they get hit on the arm and then all of a sudden there's a lump, a little bit down the arm where that attaches, and that's usually a break. 
And what tends to happen, it's happened to me once, twice before when I was a much younger instructor. Somebody came in and the, the injury was here, but the swelling was here. And the muscle had basically popped off a section off the bone. And uh, not a pleasant one to deal with. So please be careful, be vigilant when you're working with uh, children and people who are in the youth category, um, who are not fully developed yet. Their musculature is not adequately developed for their bone structure. So we, we can do a lot of different uh, routines. I've seen people add in swivel stepping, so they, they would be doing one leg, one, two, three, step through, spin around, block with the other hand, one, two, three, step through, spin around, block, 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 in some other routine. I, I think that one is kind of popular in some of the Jundokan and some, definitely some of the Mabukan dojos, where there's a stepping motion inside and uh, great for agility, movement, spatial awareness, etc. You can build on this. So the idea is how do we make our blocks better and why do we do this kind of training? So that helps develop this facet. The other problem we've got to try and get people to understand is how to actively engage. And the problem is that most people will do, and it'll just be the shoulder, just shoulder, on the shoulder, and they think they're grating, they're, they're, they're practicing a great block. There's a great blocking mechanism, but there's nothing coming from their body. So uh, we like to use blocks as strikes a lot of the time and hitting. So, okay, so this is a dummy. You're 45 degrees to me so that we can have a clear line of sight. This is a flat plane, uh, these are angled. Um, the structure is made with a gum pole uh, reinforced with wooden sides and then everything covered with a shock absorbent rubber and a synthetic uh, leather and this is something from the late Sensei Brahm, Piancis Dojo and Pochestrum. So it's not bolted on the floor and it does make a fair amount of noise. Well, what we can do is we can start working on standing and using some kind of hips. We can do the same thing with the bag. I'm just going to try and push this back. Maybe it won't jump so much. Okay, chest block. Um, I'm using the edges because that way I'm doubling, I've stolen something from Brian. This was one of Brian's ideas to do conditioning. Yes, Brian gets the credit. So, chest block or... So, what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on just relaxing and just using my, my hip. So, right, so sorry about the bumpy ride, but that's the idea that we could work on. You could do something similar with a heavy bag. The problem with our heavy bags is that they tend to be a bit soft on top, but using body weight, body weight, body weight. And just trying to work on the hip movement and the, and the hip movement, the vibration or the Rotation on the hip joint coming into the um, into the block is critical. Uh, I think the greatest dilemma that we as karate instructors face when we're teaching basics and fundamentals is trying to get a lot of different things done. And what we're really trying to do is we're trying to iron out one set of problems and then systematically work towards an end product, a goal um, of a good technique. So that when you see somebody doing a block in the cutter, um, or doing a block against somebody in some kind of basic um, kumite, some prearranged kumite, it does have some substance and some value to it. And I think that is a very, very difficult thing to get around. And then you can, when you've got that great base and the foundation is good and solid and the person is physically strong, as well as they understand the mechanism in their body, then you can start breaking the rules. And I think that is where most people stop. They obsess of just trying to replicate the form and the technique of the basics. And um, they don't break the rules. 
So somewhere along the line during the, the discourse of the last 100, 120 years, a lot of karate instructors have stopped breaking the rules, stopped trusting uh, the process, and have just become blind followers of their sensei and their sensei, sensei, and sensei, 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 so on. Um, there's one very important thing to pay tribute to the giants on whose shoulders you have climbed and risen from the floor to the ceiling. But it is more important to understand that you have to go through all the processes, but at some point, karate is combative, and uh, you need to be able to extract what works. I've never seen a guy do this in the street in a fight. I've never seen this. Or even a complete stomach block. I've never even seen it in a tournament fight. Uh, and that's like a game of touches, a game of tag. You see people blocking with open hand, blocking and blocking. The important thing is the, what they take from it. So when I coach sport karate, I often say to people, you know, bolt in this is your face block. Built in this is your block against being kicked and being hit with the gyakuzuki in the body. Um, this is very effective for dealing with kicks that are being aimed at your body where you're deflecting. Sometimes you block hard, sometimes you block soft. And I remember as a young black belt spending a lot of time blocking hard and coming home from training with blue marks everywhere. Sometimes I'm much wiser to block softly to shift your body ever so slightly. And this only comes from a painful lesson, so sensei pain, as well as from truly getting to grips with how do I break the rules? What would be acceptable? Okay, I'm not talking about adding a flick flack or a Arab spring and then landing and doing a high block and saying, well, this is my new high block. Um, I don't think it's that important to do that kind of stuff. But break it down. Have a look, what is this for? What is going on here? What is going on there? Could there be something there? Is there something there? Is there something in this mechanical pulling and pushing motion? Am I possibly choking? Is there something here? Is there something here? Is there something there? And these ideas start allowing you to break the rules in terms of how to use the components within a face block or components in a chest block or the components in a stomach block. So that is critical. So at some point we have to break the rules. At some point we have to deviate. And I think I've done a video on trying to break away from the mainstream this is only a face block. It can only be used if somebody's punching for your face. It only works that way. If you want to, you can call this side face block because that's when the person throws a hook or maybe kicks around the house kick. Um, I don't subscribe to this chain of thought. I know that there are many people who do out there and um, they're welcome to carry on doing what they're doing. I'm just putting it out there that maybe at some point if you follow all the building blocks, you'll get to a point where you're that comfortable with the block that it starts becoming more important to deviate a little bit and then to explore. So hitting the punch bag, um, practicing block hit, block hit, block hit, hit, hit. Uh, Brian come here please. Mass, punch jaw down. Pulling down, trying to smash and hit at the same time. Okay, it's kind of idea that we're working on. Punch jaw down, block hit, block hit. Okay, uh, that hand punch jaw down is better for camera. Block hit. So as I lift, I open this up here to try break grips. Okay, so I'm doing this one and I'm starting into the next one. Okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave you with some thoughts on how to train basics and 
what to do with them and how if you're a parent you may possibly be able to help your child with some of the activities and some of the other activities have to occur within the dojo and uh, yeah just reaching out and making sure that you're all okay haven't heard from a few people since uh, William Young, Sirius, Bonte, a couple of other folks um, hope you're all okay and uh, it's local uh, side uh, since uh, John Okorum down in KZN Thinking about everybody, if I haven't heard from you in a while, don't forget to leave a, even if it's just a, well, I don't get to see who does thumbs up, but just leave a, a, a little comment. We know, that we, we know that you're okay. Hi. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Sayonara.